All right, we are here for the Pocky One Chip Challenge, or as I like to call it, the Chip and a Chair Challenge to make it, you know, poker related. First off, let's put on our gloves because we do not want to get this in our eyes. I've heard that could be pretty terrible. And then we will be cutting open this bad boy. Okay. Prove that it is brand new. Cut, cut open the box. Behind me. All right, Ugh, this... here we go. The one chip challenge. Kind of, kind of scared of this. I gotta admit. What I'm gonna try to do is make it the recommended five to ten minutes without drinking the milk. And uh, to make it more interesting, we'll have my wife ask me some poker-related questions that people have asked me on the internet. So uh, we'll see how that turns out when I try to eat this. <laughs> oh man, oh, this thing is huge. Oh, it's so thick. That's what she said. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've seen people like break it in half and then try to eat the whole thing from there. Oh, it's so thick. Good luck to us. Oh my god, it's so sick. I'm not sure I can swallow this. So far it's not as uh, spicy. Oh, that's what the timer. Oh, we're already a little bit off. Oh my god. It's so thick. Oh my god, it's so hot. Alright. It's just all gone. And oh my god, it's so spicy. All right, babe, start with the questions. How are you feeling? Pretty, mi pretty miserable. Oh god, here start the hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, get the questions going. How did you get into poker? <laughs> this might be impossible. Impossible. I'm gonna need a bit. I'm gonna need a. Want some water? Milk? The milk is here. Oh my god, it is the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. Holy cow. Okay, how did I get into poker? So, I first picked up poker in college, uh, in my fraternity, amongst friends. <gasps> These questions are going to be impossible to answer. Just kind of playing with friends. Um, then I started doing it kind of as a part-time job. Once I started hating my job, I started going more and more to the casino. And then eventually got to the point. Oh my god, this is so spicy. All right, we're almost at two minutes, which is over two minutes because I started the timer late. So I then started going to the casino. It's actually uh, the closest casino I went to school in Boston. The closest casino was Foxwoods. So that was a casino that I was playing at regularly. And eventually I got to the point where a lot of my friends were leaving Boston, heading back to New York, which is where I'm from. Oh my God. I might die. Holy cow. And eventually, um, I got to the point where I was like, you know, I want to, I want to try to do this full time. And, uh, in, I believe it was 2007 or eight. I can't remember because my brain is foggy. I had decided to move to Las Vegas. I drove cross country with my parents and started playing full time. Actually, the first year there was miserable. I ended up going broke, which I think occurs to most poker players. My mouth is on fire. Oh God, it's starting to... Sort of. What does it feel like? Like, like someone. You know how we had howling rays, like num hot, hot. Like, is it like? It is so much spicier. <laughs> anyway, so we drove across country. First year of playing big poker, it was miserable. Didn't have any real friends there. Ended up going broke. And uh, had to get a cash advance on my credit card. Thankfully, started running a little better. Ran it up, and that's actually when I met my now wife, 
which I think turned it all around for me once I was able to kind of get that balance. I started playing better, was happier in my life, and things really turned around. We uh, dated long distance for about two years. And then in 2010, I moved to San Francisco to be with, uh, to her, to be with her. And uh, I was traveling back and forth. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how I got into poker. Oh God, next question, please. What is your, what is your favorite poker game? My favorite poker game. So I've been playing, obviously, No Limit the longest. Now I play a lot more Parliament Omaha, which I really enjoy. But maybe my favorite variant is uh, Deuce of Seven Triple Draw. Either as Limit or, or No Limit. Both are really fun. Oh, God. I need... Uh, uh, so, yeah, maybe Deuce of Seven Triple Draw. I really like playing mixed games. We, we play... Uh, we play a lot of mixed games when I was living in Vegas, and that was a lot of fun, a lot of 4-8 limit, and that's where you see a lot of the crazy chip porn pictures that I used to post on Instagram. All right, next question. Um, any goals in poker? Get over eating this chip. Oh, my God. Uh, probably the, the number one goal would be, obviously, to win a bracelet, but I don't play that many tournaments. I mostly play cash games because I, I think those are much more enjoyable. It's hard to find the time to play tournaments regularly. So yeah, maybe winning a bracelet would probably be number one. Next question. How much study did you do? How about solvers? Do you play online to stay fresh? So as far as studying, I don't, I don't really study anymore. Obviously my time with poker is pretty limited now. Having kids, solver work, I've done zero solver work. It's probably something that I should try to do. But without... <laughs> oh my god, I think I just swallowed kind of a, some spit and got more of the flavor. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so hot. It is so hot. The camera's still running, right? Yeah, what does your, what does your mouth feel like? Like, like death. Like, 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 is it burning? How about your stomach? Stomach feels okay right now, which I hear is going to be the really bad part later on, but right now it's my mouth. That like, really hurts. Like all of your mouth? All of my mouth. Your tongue, or? tongue, tongue, it's numb and it hurts. It's spicy, it's hot, it's painful. Like, does it feel like, like stabbing pain? Or like just a throbbing pain? Just throbbing. The whole thing is throbbing. Throbbing. Okay. Are you, are you sweating? Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> You're sweating. Oh, my God. oh, I'm sweating. So, no solver work. What was, what was the next question part after the solver? Do you play online to stay fresh? Uh, so as far as playing online, I've been playing for the last year during COVID in apps. And what I was trying to talk about the solver work, I'm not sure how applicable it is to live games now, especially the ones that I play myself, because they're pretty soft and people just aren't playing anywhere near GTO. People aren't playing that well. <laughs> oh my God. So, oh. so yeah, zero solver work. And uh, as far as playing online, I think obviously playing online is much more difficult, whereas playing on apps is still much more like playing uh, live at a casino. All right, next question. Is playing more stressful, difficult now that your dad and the player poor pool is definitely tougher? <clears throat> I would really like to drink some of that milk. Oh my God. So, is it more stressful? Uh, it definitely was in the beginning. When our first son was born, I was uh, trying to squeeze in as many hours as possible, obviously, because I wanted to play and I wanted to try to have that balance between the two. And it was really tough, because obviously, he'd be waking us up at all hours, you would need my help. And so in the beginning, the hardest part was the balance. Try to, oh God, try to squeeze it in, and obviously balance between the two. That was really, really difficult. And eventually, I think when I began to realize that poker is always going to be there and that I don't need to squeeze it in when I can and that make my family first is when I was <coughs> much happier. What was the other part, part of that question? I, was, I can't even remember. Uh, the player pool is generally tougher. And is the player pool generally tougher? Are you sure that was part of the question? Same question? Yes. Is playing stressful difficult now that your dad and the player pool is generally tougher? Oh. Uh, so yeah, I'd say that the, the player pool is tougher. I look back at some photos of games that I used to be in, and I look back and I remember how many more recreational players are at the table. So yeah, it is it is tougher because the player pool is tougher, but still live poker is just extremely soft. I think when people play say that 
when people say on the, on the video, like, oh, like, how do you even win? Are you even a winner? I think that's hilarious because winning at live poker is not very difficult. If, if you're kind of patient and studied, it really isn't that tough. Uh, obviously, having a, a bigger win rate than others is, is where the margins get increased. And so I think that's like, you know, more of a discussion, like how, how many big blinds are you winning per hour and stuff like that. But yeah, so it, it, obviously balance is key. I think I answered enough of that. Next question. Oh my God, we're almost at nine minutes. When facing a pre-flop five bet holding JJ, <laughs> Jacks, Jacks or Queens, how often do you consider folding? How often do you follow your gut? Uh, so I think that question is kind of funny because I think facing like a five bet in live poker, it's almost always like aces or ace king. So yeah, I'm probably always folding Jacks or Queens. And so particularly facing a five bet, I probably wouldn't even four bet unless I'm against like a crazy opponent. When he gets a crazy opponent, I'm just getting it in all ways against five bets. So really, I'm never really for betting queens or jacks because I think those are much more calls. And so facing a five bet, I'd be folding those hands against good players and uh, against, you know, obviously crazier opponents. I'm just always getting it in any way if I am willing to four bet. Uh, what was the next part of that question? How often do you follow your gut? Oh, yeah. Uh, gut, I think that's really important in live poker. It's obviously a big part of why I play is because of my instinct. I've been playing like 15 to 17 years now or something like that. And so, uh, yeah, I really listen to my gut. I try to uh, kind of go with my reads because I think there's just so much information and that's where a big skill edge, where I have a big skill edge in the game. Next question. How long did it take you to establish a healthy work-life balance? Uh, so like I was mentioning earlier, I think a couple of years, probably once we had our second son and then I realized, you know, focus on family and, uh, you know, don't, don't try to squeeze it in, like play when I can, find, the hours will always be there. Um, obviously I used to play full time. Now I'd say like I'm a part-time poker player and full-time dad, the, the dad aspect is much more important to me. And once I made that realization was when I was able to be like much happier and uh, I think even better at the game. Uh, once I realized, you know, that there's enough to hours in the day, once the children are a little bit older, there'll be even more time in the day. But while they're younger, all I've ever heard is, you know, obviously you want to focus on them. They're only going to be this age for a short period of time and spend as much time as possible with them. All right, it's beginning to subside a little bit. We're over 10 minutes now, all right? You know what? It was really hot in the beginning, very hot. And obviously the hiccups and everything. But now I'm a little like, this isn't so bad. I obviously I'm sweating like crazy and I'm afraid of what the stomach stuff is going to be like later, but like over 11, almost 11 minutes in, now over 11 minutes in, I'm feeling all right. Next question. Do you want to have some milk? No, I don't want to have any milk. Um, do you teach your kids poker? Good or bad idea? Uh, yeah, someone asked me this question. So yeah, I, I haven't taught him anything. I think Charlie has obviously seen me playing on the apps a lot when I'm putting him to bed. I'll be playing off sometimes and he's watching. So he's learned a lot. Like he, he'll ask me if I'm bluffing, which I think is really funny. Uh, so I think he's beginning to learn stuff. He's asking questions. I've heard him say stuff like he'll see an oval and be like, is that the shape of a poker table? Uh, so he's learning it, I think, just by watching me. I think there's a lot that can be gained from learning poker. There's obviously a lot of math involved. There's a lot of like skills that I think are involved. What are you pointing at? I'm looking. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm, I'm looking around because I'm losing my mind still. Uh, but would I want them to play poker? I think it's one of the hardest ways to make a living. I think it's extremely difficult. Uh, there's obviously a lot of things that you learn, I think, once you get into the gambling world where people lose their ways. I've, I've known a lot of very successful poker players who were unsuccessful because they couldn't manage the extra stuff, the extracurriculars, whether it's, you know, gambling in the pit, uh, kind of being around that lifestyle, uh, whether it's like kind of crazy girls or uh, drugs, things of that sort, and they often lose their way. So I feel like poker just kind of leads you in a, in a kind of a scary direction, and a lot of people can't make it through that. And more importantly, if you can be successful at poker, you can be successful at anything. Uh, I think that people that are very successful at poker would probably be very successful at a lot of other jobs and likely can make even more money in those jobs. So if your goal is to play poker to make a lot of money, I think there's better ways to make money uh, than playing poker. And so I would focus on those things. And that's why I don't think I'd want them necessarily to learn because I'd be a little afraid like, oh, hey, like let me play a game for a living. And it's, it's really difficult. So uh, as far as whether I'd want them to learn, I do think there are positive aspects, like I said, but ultimately I would not want them to grow up to be professional poker players. What is the biggest pot you've ever won slash lost? Oh man, biggest pot I've ever lost is probably one that I vlogged about. I'll have a link in the, I think it's in this direction above that you can watch. I think it was like a 5, 10, 20 pot limit on my hand where we got three ways all in. I think it was somewhere between like 15 and $20,000 where, uh, 
watch the video. It's we get in a, a multi-way pot where a friend of mine got crazy because uh, I didn't three better four better hand, and he's expected that I didn't have that great of a hand, and he's trying to get in against a recreational player. I had like eight, nine, ten jack or something like that. I flopped like a pair and a straight draw. We got it all in, and I ended up well. Watch the video. So that was probably the biggest pot I've ever lost. As far as pot I've ever won, I think I have a video for that too. It might be somewhere around ten thousand, maybe eight to ten thousand. I can't, I can't remember anymore. It's I feel like in poker you always say everybody remembers the biggest pot. <coughs> they've ever lost, but they uh, never really remember the biggest pot they've won. All right, next question. Um, worst bad beat you've ever taken without being a bad beat jackpot? I got another video for that one. Uh, I think we always remember the things that happened most recently. So the one that re uh, remains in my mind is the one where I flopped the full house and the guy hit the one outer for quads. Uh, it was a three way all in. So the other guy probably had a two outer to make a bigger full house. Uh, watch the video again, like I said, if you'd like to see that hand, cause I thought it was pretty exciting. But, uh, as far, so that's probably the one that sticks out in my mind the most. I, I remember a few where I'd flop like top set. I think, I think there was one where I flopped top set a long time ago and somebody made a runner runner quads. They had like an under pair and made runner runner quads. So that's probably the worst because it's perfect. Perfect. Obviously the perfect, perfect is the hardest or the, the biggest bad beat. Uh, I actually did hit a bad beat jackpot once here. And I think the first year or so playing here in lucky chances, I had a bad beat where I was trying to play no limit. I had dropped my friend off at the airport. And after dropping off at the airport, I was like, well, I'm right by the casino. Let me jump in. There was no no limit game running. So they had a limit game. I think it was like 4-8 or 6-12. Or they were going to put me in a 4-8 game. Then a seat opened in 6-12. They had a chip down that said player seat is locked up. And I'm like, okay, like I, I thought it was for me. And they're like, you know, you could just take it. And uh, I think it was in the first orbit. I picked up, I think I had, I had pocket aces. And I raised in the limit. Like I said, it was 6-12. I raised. We went multi-way. came like ace-jack-10. Uh, I bet, got raised, I called, or I re-raised, they called, the turn was an ace, so I made quad aces. And then uh, we began bet, raise, call, and then on the river came a jack, and I bet, he raised, went back and forth, and like on the fourth or fifth raise, everyone at the table's like, one more raise, one more raise, and in my mind, I'm thinking like, there's no way this is a bad beat, right, because I've never, I've never even seen one at a table I've been at, so I was just like, there's just no way, I didn't really think about it. And then obviously, once our hands are turned over, I turned over the top quads, and sure enough, he had pocket jacks. Uh, for the losing hand. And the funny thing was, there was actually a straight flush possible. So I would have had the bigger portion of that bad beat. Uh, at the time, I think it was $100,000. So I would have won half, which was $50,000. Uh, in this case, the winner of the hand got 20%. So I got like $20,000. And then after taxes, it was like fifteen dollars or something like that. Next question. What? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm over it. This thing is just, this thing's a joke. So yeah, this, isn't that spicy anymore? I, you know what? I'm over it. I got to admit, I'm over it. I don't even need the milk. I'm probably not going to have I, the I milk. I think you should put it all back in the box. This is what I... This is what I have to say to you, one chip challenge. I'm not scared of you. Can you put it all that? back in the box so we can I just will, throw it out? Okay. Um, all right. What's the next question? Um, why are your videos not as good as Brad Owen? <laughs> that comes from Bobby, my good friend Bobby, who's actually the one friend I did know in Las Vegas. He's a friend of mine from Boston that first moved out there before I did. And uh, he's thinks he's hilarious. Why are my questions not as good as his? I mean, why are my videos not as good as his? Because I mean, he's the best. What can I say he's funny? Uh, he's charming. He's good looking. He's just the best at what he does. Uh, I, I'm not sure I could think of another reason as to why mine are as good as his. Next question. What's the perfect game table experience? You look around. You look around and describe what you see. look around and describe what you see. Oh, okay. So that comes from another uh, friend that I've met playing poker. Uh, as far as like the, the perfect experience, I think. People, just people having fun. This latest endeavor of playing live poker with all the plexiglass and that stuff, uh, it's been miserable. It's hard to converse with anybody. The biggest part I love live poker is the interactions. It's really cool being able to meet you know people and get to, to get to talk to them, joke around. That's what I really love about the game. And so as far as a perfect table, just a table of people talking, you know, nobody on their headphones, nobody looking at their iPads. I've seen people before have the table with like their iPads, their cell phones, watching TV, and that's just miserable. So I'd say the perfect experience is where everyone's talking to each other. Next question. That's it. That's all of the questions. Yeah, good job. 20 minutes. We're at, we're at uh, like 18 minutes. 18 minutes of the chip. The video's at like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. No sweat. I got to admit, I was a lot more afraid of this. We're at 20 minutes. What is, here, let's look at this. What they, oh, there's a coupon here. Pocky one chip challenge here. I'm a, I'm a champion. I'd say I'm a, I'd say I'm a champion, you know? Like I said, now that we're like 20 minutes in, I don't, I don't even feel it anymore. All right, that's all for the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you know, if, if you'd like to try this one chip challenge, I think you could still buy them on the internet. Uh, try it for yourself. 
I hope you guys got something out of this. Thanks for watching. Let's try to get this video to uh, 50,000 views. I think the most views I've ever had on a video was like almost 40,000, one of my older ones. So let's hopefully get this one to 50,000. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the thumb up, and uh, more importantly, hit the bell for uh, all notifications going forward. I know sometimes people say they don't get notifications. There is an option once you hit the bell to hit all notifications. I really appreciate you guys, and I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next Hand History video. Thank you. Two hours later. Holy crap, I've angered the gods. Half an hour afterwards, I thought I was fine. Oh my God, my stomach hurts now. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. It hurts so bad. This was such a bad idea.